Hello and welcome to Humans of Fusia. I'm Rhea Sinha, your host, and today we have the pleasure of welcoming Nora Herding. She is the CEO and co-founder of ImageThink, a visual strategy firm that combines the tools of graphic recording and the principles of design thinking to help drive innovative business transformations. She is also an author of a book called Draw Your Big Idea, which is published on Chronicle, and she's an artist as well. Welcome to the show. Hi, Rhea. Um, so great, I'm just going to ask you a few questions about you and kind of your journey. So the first one is briefly introduce yourself, like what work are you doing now and what led you to that? Yeah, so primarily now, you know, I'm the founding CEO of ImageThink and we will turn 13 uh, this month. Uh, and uh, right now our, we're a team of 11 people uh, located in um, Brooklyn and in California, but recently also um, as far as Portugal and upstate New York with COVID and the team working virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we have had, you know, a really interesting time this last year helping our clients figure out how to keep people engaged um, while working virtually. Mm-hmm. So really helping clients move to uh, facilitated meetings in a virtual format and we find that the things that we do helping uh, drive communication, drive engagement, drive cre- creativity is just as important now with every all the challenges we're facing working remotely as it was when we could all meet face to face. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, what tools would you be using for like, you know, doing, I guess, the same things you do in person on Zoom? Like, do you just yeah. use Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, our team, the folks that are using visuals, the graphic recorders and graphic facilitators are using, um, Procreate on the iPad. Oh, mm-hmm. and we had, we created a whole new position with someone on our team who's had to do, um, you know, a ton of research on how to move our capability virtually. So that gets broadcasted and we can, um, you know, we can support clients really in any virtual space, you know, whether it's Zoom or Teams or Skype. Um, as well and then another fun challenge is we also would run workshops facilitated mm-hmm. workshops and trainings where we're helping people learn how to use basic drawing as leadership tools which used to be you know big sheets of paper people drawing large um, and figuring out different ways to make that work virtually so whether some of that is digital but a lot of times we'll actually get people to still physically draw and hold those things up for the camera um, it kind of breaks the monotony of doing everything on the computer and you so you get to express yeah. yourself with your hands. Oh yeah, that sounds really cool um, and definitely a bit more engaging in this COVID times. So my next question kind of goes into like your background and your culture. So how does your culture or background or childhood kind of inform the way that you make decisions and the decisions that you have made in your career and stuff? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, my... Uh, as a, as a child, I grew up uh, moving around the United States a lot. I think I, I moved nine times before I was 12 with my family. And so there was always just a lot of change and adapting. And I think that that has served me well um, on more untraditional career paths. I started out as a fine artist, you know, and there's no real rule book for that. Um, and then became almost accidentally an entrepreneur. Um, and there's certainly, um, you know, there's a lot of advice out there, but it's really a lot of it is your intuition and following your gut. So I think being able to um, react and adapt to change was something that I learned at an early age that served me well. Wow. How did you accidentally become an entrepreneur? Did you just kind of like st- stuff? <laughs> <on it? laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, you know, I had grown up um, in a working class family and I wanted to pursue art, but really Mm -hmm. the the only sort of job that had sort of the stability that you would want um, that position was to be a professor at a university. So that was very competitive, but I got a position at a private university and pretty quickly was like, I made it and then realized that wasn't really for me at all. And I had to be honest and I thought, you know, this is a dream that really is more of a failure of imagination. Like I haven't really considered what else to do, which uh, that's riskier, right? And so what do you do after that? Well, you um, 
you resign and you move to New York with no job, which is what <laughs> I did. And um, at the time, my mom uh, said, well, you know, when you move to New York, are you going to get a job at an art firm? And I said, an art firm? What's an art firm, mom? And she was like, well, you know, it's like a place artists all go and they're employed by a company and they make artwork for other companies. And I mostly just look at had her like she was not just more like a law firm, but for artists, an art firm. And at that point, I wasn't even laughing. I just, I was, I said, mom, that, that doesn't exist. And she got really quiet. We were we were having dinner. I remember this when I was about to move to New York. And she's like, Nora, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. I said, I, have, I don't know. And I felt terrible, you know, because here I was, I had two degrees. And my mother was completely worried about uh, my ability to just take care of myself. <laughs> and then, you know, I fell in with, with a good friend of mine who was working um, what we would call a design thinking space for a big <laughs> company, but back then they didn't even use the word design thinking. And they staffed it with um, people with all kinds of different skill sets and it was freelance. So they knew I was an artist and I had a background as an art teacher. So they, they taught me graphic recording on the job and I would do that amongst many other things like supporting these workshops. So that happened and then the financial crash uh, in 2009 happened and I just sort of made a website and my same girlfriend who got me the job was like, well, I'll make a website. And I said, well, we should just do this together. So that was how ImageThink was born, but it really was, you know, our, my, my aspiration was just to make enough, uh, you know, get enough work to support my art career. And it just sort of took off. And that's where, you know, I think being flexible and seeing opportunity yeah. helps is, is I thought, okay, well, this wasn't exactly what I thought I was going to be doing, but then Years later, Ria, I walked into my office in Brooklyn. I looked around. I saw all these artists that I employed making, um, you know, these visual summaries for co companies. And I thought, oh my God, my mom was right. Like this is the art <laughs> uh, that I I actually made it, you know. And um, that's the thing that I feel the most proud about is just finding a place to give um, people with art arts backgrounds and arts training a career path that brings our skills and gives, um, you know, imparts what we do and empowers business uh, business leaders to use those same skills for real business change. So <laughs> it's been it's been uh, definitely not a straight path, but yeah. an amazing an amazing uh, journey for sure. That sounds like such an amazing story. I think you really came full circle with the dinner with your mom and like the original idea, I guess. Um, my next question kind of is more general, but like what three topics do you feel that you're most passionate about? They can be in anything like professional, casual. Yeah, right now, geez, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm really passionate about the, the power of visuals to enact ch uh, change and, and um, communicate. And that's, you know, work that I do in image thing, but it's also, um, you know, it's also basically the, the mandate of, of artists to to express themselves. So that's really important to me. Um, you know, staying uh, informed in the news right now is um, even, you know, increasingly more important. Uh, making sure I'm informed about the science, about facts that are happening with COVID, about the political changes and climate in the United States. Um, so that's really taken, uh, you know, real focus as things have unfolded. And um, thirdly, I'm, I'm really passionate about health. Um, I've had some health problems in the past. I had Lyme's disease for, for many years. And so making sure that, um, that I exercise and eat right and the people around me do the same thing is also something that is just continually important because it fuels my ability to do everything else I want to do. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that's really important, especially like right now. Um, and my next question is, what are some of the challenges that you faced by the in the initial years of your career? I think you kind of touched on this earlier, but and what are some challenges that you maybe face now as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think the challenges early in my career was that you know it was both a blessing and a challenge, which was like there was no straight. Um, instruction manual for what you need to do and um, 
as you know as an artist and and as a business person too you kind of have to create your own niche and you can't expect other people to understand the value of what you're doing you have to sort of believe in it and then create a space around that to explain why it's important to other people so those were um those were challenges early on i also think that there was a, a spot where um as the business was developing my then business partner and i, I think we really felt like we didn't have the experience to be entrepreneurs and and, and run a business and um, you know, but of course, everybody's just making it up as you as you go. So, so those I say with early challenges, and then the current challenges. Oh, geez. Well, there's a lot of external ones. Um, I think that it. You know, once you have a success, sometimes you can be the victim of your own success. So my, you know, my company is, like I said, um, turning 12, um, and what. I have to challenge myself to be like, well, the way that we did things in the past might not be the best way anymore, especially with technology, right? And, um, you, you know, certain techniques we used or, or ways we went about things. So it's great to have other people on my team that come in new with sort of fresh eyes and, and see that. So I think not staying complicit, like you have something that works well enough, maybe it's your service or maybe it's just actually something in your culture, or your process. and. and always trying to look at that and see like you know is this is this still the best way is there a way to do it better and push yourself so that you know that I think is a challenge in the mindset to just keep um, going and then um, I, I think that uh, yeah um, right now you know it's also I also miss my social networks I yeah. think and all of the great like conversations or serendipity that you would find when you were able to be in the same room with clients or other business owners you know it's a little bit different virtually so no yeah definitely it's difficult to adjust hopefully we're at the end of this now though mm -hmm. um yeah okay my next question is like what are you looking forward to in the future or like any new opportunities that are coming up yeah. Um, well, I've had on my list a second book oh, wow. for a year or two now, and I think 2021 is going to be the year for that to really take shape and mm -hmm. really more um, about what I call visual leadership and creative leadership and, and speaking to people and saying creativity is not something that is um, reserved only for artists or musicians or people who necessarily have like a creative job but really it's about decision making and finding opportunities every day wherever you are so I'm excited to get that message out um, and I'm really excited about what my team is going to be doing I think it's great as we get a kind of invent where we go at image think and also can everyone gets to contribute their own um, passions and talents so we really started doing a lot more um, video and you know virtual hosting and there's a few people on my team that have a real talent for that so i'm excited to see continually just pushing mm -hmm. the limits of what's possible in our space that sounds really amazing and i think that's cool you like opportunities to kind of i guess think of new unique ways um to adapt like virtually as well and like grow your skill set so that sounds great um my last question is do you have any message or like kind of motivation for like an audience or a young woman who would be watching this? Yeah, I love this question. And I was thinking there was a post recently about mentorship and I was thinking about the mentor that had the most impact on me was a professor when I was at the University of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and her name, she's an artist named Adrian Salinger. And she said to me, you know, and this is a very different context, but I think it rings true. I was working on, um, you know, probably what would be like my first body of, of art. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't really sure what was going and it was pretty strange. And she said, you know what, if you're scared of what you're making and you're not sure what it is, that's how you know that you're on to something original. So I've kept that, um, when she said it to me, it gave, you know, me chills down my mm -hmm. spine certainly made me feel better because I had plenty of doubt about <laughs> every day what I was doing. Um, and I think it rings true whether that, you know, you're a young artist or you're making a career change or you're going to embark on a new project or you're going to start your own business. It's like if you're scared and you're not quite sure that what you're doing has been done before, then that's a good indication that you're on to something remarkable. 
and you just have to keep pushing through it. So it's amazing. I can't take credit for that advice. I would just <laughs> pass on the wisdom that was given to me. No, I think that's really good advice. And it's, I mean, I'm in college right now, so that definitely rings true. Like I have so much doubt in like literally everything that I do, but um, I think that's a good way to kind of spin it in a more positive light and realize that, you know, you're trying to make it like, you'll find your voice and eventually like, you should be kind of scared and like apprehensive of like what you're doing, I guess. And like, right. otherwise, like you're probably playing it way too safe, mm -hmm. right? You know exactly what you're doing and you're probably not really challenging yourself enough. But if yeah, you're like, always true. on that edge, we're a little unsure and you know, you're pushing yourself. Yeah, that's so, so true. Yeah. Okay. Those are all my questions. Um, if you wanted to add anything else, um, no, this has been great. It was really fun chatting with you. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much um, for being a part of Humans of Fusion. And thank you everyone else for watching.